stop sticking. Should we get out? Yeah, let's go. We're in the easternmost part of Ukraine. You go any further east and you're in Russia. This uh, area is called Lugansk. And what's happened here is that some pro-Russia protesters have taken over the SBU building, which is the headquarters of the security service. And uh, they've armed themselves with the guns they found there. And they say they're not planning on getting out. <laughs> We're outside the uh, security building, the headquarters for the city, and uh, last night the guys inside issued a warning to the Ukrainian authorities saying that if they planned to attack to kick them out, they'd welcome them to hell. Против кого? Против нас, боевых офицеров, которые хотят лишь провести референдум. Добро пожаловать в ад. Мы вас встретим достойно. Киев, Львов, пусть вот тот сделает себе маленькое государство, Украина, и там живут. Донбасс, это Россия, это всю жизнь была Россия. Не страшно ли, потому что объявили по телевизору, что э, все, которые здесь будут считаться преступниками и будут их сажать? Как бы не страшно, потому что деваться некуда, хуже уже некуда будет. А чувствуется какая-то поддержка с Россией? Пока что не могу сказать. Ждем ее, ждем ее, мы верим в нее. Inside, they're saying that they're Afghan war veterans. They fought for the Soviet Union and Afghanistan in the 80s. And they're saying that they're going to hold on to the building. And now what they're doing is they're waiting for a delegation of legislators from the region to come and negotiate with them about leaving the building peacefully. Um, we're waiting for the legislators to show up too because they won't let us into the building until they've come to some kind of an agreement with them. So we're, it's a bit of a waiting game at this point. So apparently the deputies from the local council, they've arrived and they're now inside the building negotiating with the Afghanistan veterans. So uh, we're going to come and wait for them to come out, hopefully get inside. У нас есть и на данный момент и солдаты Беркута, и МВД, и много офицеров запаса, афганцы, летчики, казаки. У нас представители всех. А существует такой вариант, при котором вы активисты после завершения переговоров покинете здание добровольно? Да, только после выполнения наших требований о проведении референдума о федерализации и о полной неприкосновенности всех участвующих в открытом протесте. В какой форме федерализации вы хотите видеть? Просто хотим стать именно федеральным как бы, округом, пока в составе государства, а там решит народ. Мы не можем решать за народ сами. А у вас есть какая-то поддержка из России? На данный момент нет. Мы только опираемся только на свои силы. So we're in the captured SBU building. We've just met with the leader of the uh, guys who have taken it over, and they're telling us that what they want is for Ukraine to be a federal country, so that their region has more rights within Ukraine. But they've captured all the weapons here, as I said before, and they um, they say they're prepared to hold the building for as long as it takes until their demands are met. They don't want us to see uh, their armed positions around the building, so they've taken us to the kitchen. That's actually lard with mayonnaise on top.
Так, так, So we just got out of the SBU building, it was totally calm inside, everything under control, but the moment we got outside, it was like all hell broke loose. There was some drunk guy that they were dragging around, beating up. Stuff's on fire, like people are carrying bats. A lot of them seem really drunk. People started saying that they think there's troops coming and they're worried about a storm happening or something. So we're gonna go drive around and see if we can find if there's actually any Ukrainian troops coming to get them. Jesus Christ. They're fucking creeping around. Jesus, stop saying You can't see that, can you? Can we Should we get out? Yeah, let's go. Get out, get out. What are they going to do? Okay, so we're in a little alleyway, a little residential street. Down that way, the uh, police or the special forces are moving forward. They're sort of creeping along the wall. And just over here, there's a group of just civilian-looking people. It seems waiting for them to arrive or trying to block the street so that they can't get through. And we're about, I don't know, maybe two, three blocks away from the uh, security services building. You know, we don't want to turn the lights on because we don't want them to know that we're filming because they've been very aggressive with us before when we were out with our camera. And right now, it's really tense. So in response to the police creeping around, the protesters, they've formed a human shield around the security headquarters and the announcer keeps telling them to stay here until five or six in the morning as long as it takes. Um, but I think it would be crazy if the police actually decided to storm the building with all those gunmen inside. It would be a total bloodbath. Hopefully they'll be able to negotiate their way out of this situation. It's day five of the occupation of the security headquarters in Lugansk. They made it through the night, there was no storm, but the Ukrainian authorities gave them a deadline, which has now come and gone, and still the uh, police haven't tried to retake the building. I think this might play out for a long time to come, because the building's full of gunmen, uh, and uh, taking it wouldn't be so easy. <laughs> Мы вы должны, вы должны действовать. Я вас прошу, не сдайте нашу победу. Забейте вы на эту работу, блин. Надо биться до конца. Победа будет за нами. We've managed to get back into the security headquarters for a second time and they wanted to give us a statement so we're going to meet one of their leaders who was actually involved in the uh, video that they posted initially in the internet with all of their masks on threatening that all hell would break loose if anybody tried to come in and storm them. Мы сюда пришли без оружия. И то, что мы сейчас здесь находимся с оружием, это вынужденная мера по защите нас. То есть вы сами прекрасно понимаете, что в любой из моментов могут Как Сюда, только будут выполнены требования, да, оружие будет есть сложно. Мы свою безопасность просто-напросто таким образом отставим. У нас есть требования наши, и мы требуем их не исполнения. Все. Никита, откуда у тебя такой фингал? Что случилось? Короче, иду я вчера, и до меня два шкафа, просто ну, два очень больших человека доклепываются и говорят, типа, ну, откуда ты? Я говорю, я здесь, здешний, все нормально. А за кого ты? А за что ты? Я такой, типа, то я, то я за мир говорю, то все нормально, ну, то есть никаких проблем. И все, потом полетела подача, я просто упал. И э, ты думаешь, это из-за того, что ты как бы не сказал, что я за Россию? Да, я думаю, да. Почему? 
Как-то я трудно ответить, я не знаю, они, наверное, ну, по чем-то были, или бухи, или просто ну, два очень огромные шкафа, я просто на них только на лампу какую-то смотрел, там, знаешь. Кажется снаружи, что в Луганске все э, за Россию. В Луганске все за Россию? Да не, я бы не сказал, я очень кучу много людей могу найти, которые скажут, что ну, мы, за, мы за Украину, и все нормально. Но... Не знаю, но многие люди думают, что если они присоединятся к России, то все станет, станет сразу красочно, в фейерверках и все такое, но я так не думаю. Да, он меня чуть не подрезал. Не, не снимай. Ну подыми его. Руки за спину, блядь. Руки за спину, блядь. Руки за спину, у него можно. Положи его. Оля, нож дай. Все, поднимайте. Нож где, блядь? Поднимайте его. Мы видели это кафе, и кто-то сказал, что кто-то убил на улице. Я вышел и увидел толпу, которая не была убита, только ранена немного. And uh, apparently he has been somehow against all this crowd, and uh, as they claimed, uh, he had an, a knife on him. So I don't really know what, what exactly happened there, because uh, those guys aren't really very sincere when they're answering questions. Did they beat him up? Apparently. Can you tell me um, how you feel about everything that's been going on in your city in the last sort of few days? Well, it, it is slightly depressing. Somehow we uh, need to get rid of them to clear the situation and uh, uh, then again we can't use any force. I mean no we, I mean uh, armed forces of Ukraine. And do you uh, think it's a good idea for Lugansk to be part of Russia? No. Uh, well, <laughs> I can't tell for sure, but uh, I feel like I, if I'm gonna wake up in Russia one day, I'm emigrating back to Ukraine. <laughs> Once. Got it. Yes.